Time to get the cover off, get the axles out. I need to verify that they're 28 spline. They should be, but you never know after 50 years, right? So this one's already loose, because this one had the bracket in it. This is actually going to be an issue. That's funny. I have not drained any of the fluid out of here. Well, she had fluid in her. So the next thing now, I gotta get the pin out of the center here. So I'm just gonna spin this over. There's a bolt in here. There she is, right there. So this bolt right here, I need to get him out. He holds this cross pin in here. And that's what holds this whole works. Okay, gonna give him some love taps. Come on. Oh yeah. Not terribly tight. Imagine you'd use some thread locker on that. Won't matter because I'm getting a different differential. Yeah, I decided to go with the posi. I think I already mentioned that in my last video. But she's definitely not holding that pin in anymore. comes out. Let's give her a little push is all. I got a brake dragon over here a little bit. Okay, come on. Come on, and oh, she's coming. She's coming. There we go. Out. Okay. Remember when I said I had to verify everything? Yeah. My axle does not have C-clips. I was wondering why this looked like this had bolts inside of here. Now I know why. Because it has bolts inside of here. So never trust anything on an old car, boys and girls. Because this was a bolt on. I guess I don't need a C-clip eliminator kit. 
my axe didn't have C clips to start with. Well, I had to do some reading for this one. So apparently, mine are press in bearings, and then there's a bracket that holds it in place. So I just took a, a drift punch and a hammer, and my axle just popped loose just now. Sorry, you missed that. I was just, I was just playing around trying to figure it out. So, anyway, this is loose now. There we go. There's my axle. Alright. Now. Need to count my splines. That's the whole point of taking this apart today. There's no intentions of working on it, no parts. Other than, you know, cleaning it up. But I need to count the splines because this particular case, I didn't even have the axle I thought I had. Well, the important thing that matters is now I know how many splines. It is a 28 spline axle. The axles are actually have bearings that are pressed in. But anyway, now I've got my spline count. Now I can order my, my posi carrier. The rest of this video will probably be in about a week or maybe sometime during the week cleaning on this thing. Started receiving parts in. Here's one of them. And boy, she's stapled shut too. This should be my limited slip differential. I got it from Jegs, as you can see on the box here. And it's Jegs brand. Item, so I'm sure they don't want it falling out. Well packed, and it is actually laying sideways in the box instead of vertical. That's all right. And there she be. And that literally is all that's in the box. No instructions. Nothing. Just this. All right, that's all there is to it, I guess. Looks like I've got, here's a center pin. Here's the bolt for it. So it's just like on, oh, but you can't even see down here. Oh yeah, a little bit. Let me zoom in. So on the other one had a bigger bolt, but this bolt really doesn't do much. It's a smaller bolt, but you've got the cross pin here. And you've got your clutches for the limited slip. So it says POSI uh, POS GM8226. Uh, and this was rated for a, what did it say? 3.3 and up? I can't remember exactly. Um, but mine's a 3.36. So, and it is a 28 spline. So that should, that should work perfectly. I was really kind of surprised they didn't have uh, any instructions or anything in here. That uh, seems kind of odd. Well, I'm going to put this back in the box for now. Um, until I get done cleaning everything. No point in having it out here getting all full of dust and dirt. So I have not sent the axle out yet. Should have done that yesterday, and I kind of forgot. Um, I went and bought bearings already. All right, so I really should have verified what I had first. So I got my calipers, and 2.750, but it's 3,000 under 2.747. And I just measured this other one here, the replacement. Same thing, 2.740765, uh, 2.7465. So, I mean, it's just, it's right there. 0.967 also. Okay, so we should be good. And then this shaft measures 1.350. The ID measures 0.3. 
370. Was I measuring down here? Oh, it's bigger down there. Right here it gets bigger. Um, right, right at the bearing. So here it's 1.350, but down right on where the bearing is is 1.370. So yeah, that is a that is a press fit on there. So I am not going to mess with that. I'll bring it to a shop, have them press that off and back on. I really wanted to get them off of here so I could clean up this this plate that holds the bearings and clean up the axle. So. Not sure how I'm going to do that because I really want to have that clean before I put it back together. If I just pay them to, pre to press it on and off, then that's not going to get very clean. Well, I definitely learned something new. In order to get these axles out, I didn't have to take the cover or anything off because when they're bolted in, there's no retainer on the inside. Uh, obviously, no C clips, they're bolted on. So uh, I'm going to have to take the axles in. I got them both out. They came out without too much fanfare so um, if you have the same thing it shouldn't be a problem actually getting the axle out those bearings though you see the main bearing here's the bearing and then it has this retaining ring here that aligns it um, and that's they're both pressed on there from my understanding so I'll have to take those in and get them pressed off I want to go ahead and get this all cleaned up and then I'll have to take it back to them and press on the new bearings I did get to the correct bearings, um, so we should be good to go there. In the meantime, I'm rebuilding the rear brakes. Kind of gave the back plate here a little bit of a rattle can rebuild. Um, and I did have a, a hardware kit I'm going to put in it to kind of freshen up these springs. Um, took and wire brushed some of the components down. Not all of them. This kit didn't come with a, with a new adjuster, and this one was just fine. Um, there's a lot of stuff that did not come in this kit. It was a really, really cheap kit. Basically, all it was was a, they called it a hardware kit. The kit I got for the front, that had the adjuster. It had, like, the uh, the adjuster arm. Uh, it had a lot of stuff with it, so I was actually a little more happy with that, with that kit. But this has all the kind of necessities to refreshing your brakes with all the springs and the plugs and all that. So just waiting for the paint to dry in this first one. And then I'll get it put together. I don't want to take apart the second one until I'm done with the first one. Leave yourself a pattern. I've done them many times, but why uh, why waste time going back and having to, to look it up? I've got one sitting right here. It's just a mirror image of that one. Um, obviously it has the brake cable, the e-brake cable on there. Those appear to be in good condition, so I'm going to reuse them. I'm just going to clean up the clean up the connectors, and we should be good to go. <coughs> I have been doing a lot of verifying today. If you pull your cover off, you can see your ring gear, and there'll be numbers stamped on the ring gear. And this one was stamped 3711. Even if I zoom in, you probably won't be able to see it. But anyway, 3711, and if you take 37 divided by 11, you get 3.36, so that's the gear ratio that was in this. And I'm actually gonna stick with that, and I'm gonna inspect this ring gear here in a minute. Um, let me go ahead and get it off of here. Just bolt it to the carrier, and uh, that's what I was doing right now. If you order the rebuild kit, the one I want to order, it comes with new bolts for this because I'll have to bolt this to my new uh, to my new posi carrier. Limited slip. Just fall right off there now. Yep. She's 
kind of on there, but it's more of a don't pull it off crooked thing than it is that it's actually stuck. I'm going to grab my rubber mallet. Of course, it's kind of sitting on the table here. Let's try this instead. Come on, baby. Only been on there 53 years. Come on. There we go. I'll get this all cleaned up and inspected. And as long as this is good, I planned on reusing my ring and pinion gears. Um, no reason not to if they're in good shape. This rear end, um, I mentioned in previous videos a long time ago, I believe is out of a car that was sitting in a junkyard. Because um, it's not the posi that came in the car. And the engine and transmission were out of a 70. This one appears to be out of a, to be the correct axle. Or at least close but that gear I'll probably I'll get an eye loop and start inspecting it but I I don't see any damage here at all no chip edges nothing's jumping out at me uh, I will get I will have to inspect this but right now nothing's looking terribly worn I don't feel any like sharp edges and it looks like the gear was way down in the uh, way down on the root so it was in a good spot okay looks like it's a little rounded like right here but I'll have to look and see if that's the way they were made or if that's a sign of wear um, oh no that's a little chamfer there's a little chamfer here and a little chamfer here I I have a feeling this gear is going to be plenty good to use as long as the pinion gear is also. Um, we're going to put them back in with my new carrier. Little by little I'm cleaning stuff up. That's my rear differential cover. And uh, boy she cleaned up really nice. There was a couple small little bends right down in here that I was able to pound out and kind of form out on the... Uh, on the vise on the anvil on there and then um, sanded it all down I uh, used a wire brush and sandpaper then flat sanded the back side um, on the on the workbench and um, that covers not warped at all uh, so the gasket should seal really good it took me a while to get all the gasket off of there um, thought that'd be kind of boring to watch and the thing is I didn't want to spend a lot of time filming and then find out it was bent and then I end up buying a new one anyway. So little bonus footage here. Differential cover came out really nice. There's the other drum. I should have the brakes done tomorrow. And then hopefully next week uh, we can start putting some stuff back to together. I'll get those bearings pulled off the axles, get that cleaned up. Get them ready to go back in here. I've got my carrier. Um... I, there's my two shims laying on the floor right there. There's one on the left, one on the right. Um, I measured those are within five thou of each other. So hopefully when the new carrier goes in, it'll be it'll be similar. Or we might have to play around with shims. I'm buying a rebuild kit, so it should have a bunch of shims in there if necessary. Um, that's about it for tonight. Um, we're gonna get back to it tomorrow and uh, continue with uh, cleaning this up. About the right size socket for this. Let's get the pinion gear out of here. Ooh, that made quick work of that. Perfect. All right. All right. If you have a steering wheel or a harmonic balancer puller, you're going to need that in order to pull this yoke off of here. Hopefully I can do this without breaking anything.
two-legged dog here. <sighs> I think I'm going to call that a video for the week. Uh, I'm going to continue to work on the brakes and get them all together. I was trying to get this yoke off of here. And I don't know if you can tell on the video, but she's smoking. <laughs> I had her heated up. Wiped out one of my pullers. Went and bought another puller, but I brought the wrong kind. I think I'm just going to take it into a shop and have them pull this yoke off of here. I don't know why it's so rusted on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and soak it with some more penetrant. And then I think I'll bring it in. I don't have any way to get that off of there. She's obviously rusted on pretty good. So, don't have the right tools. I really want to reuse this yoke. I want to reuse the pinion. So, I'm going to stop before I break something. So, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, it's not the most exciting video this week. It, kind of a little bit of here, a little bit there. I'm all over the place. Uh, but that's how projects go sometimes. You work on this, you work on that. Waiting for parts and whatnot. So, uh, thanks again for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that great stuff. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Have a great day.